Hey everyone, Simon and Alex here with Top Tennis Training. And in this video, we're going to cover the three steps to the perfect forehand lag. Now, before we get any deeper into the lesson, if you're serious about improving your game, then make sure you have subscribed to the channel and you turn on that notification bell. So what exactly is racket lag? Now, prior to contact, you want to have the racket head delayed behind the grip and the hand. So my racket head is delayed. So this part is leading the way, the butt cap is leading the way towards that contact point. And I'm in this position here, my wrist is laid back, as you can see, and the racket head is now lagging behind the grip and the hand. So why exactly do we want racket lag? Well, one of the reasons is because the wrist becomes in a much more stable position when it's in a locked back position like so. So as I'm making contact with the ball, if I'm here and the net is pushing against my contact, I'm now in a strong position here. I feel nothing in my wrist. If I was to make my wrist this way and not lock it back, not have the lag position, I'm now having difficulty in pushing forward. I'm gonna have wrist injuries and I'm not gonna hit an effective shot. Now make sure you watch this lesson right to the end because we'll be showing you two simple drills that will help you achieve that effortless forehand lag. Now the other main reason is that you're creating that leverage, that force over the ball. Now if my racket head and the grip come through together, this indicates that my wrist is very tight, so I don't have that relaxation, but I'm also not creating anything, I'm not creating that force that I want over the ball. Now, if you think about hammering a nail, if I'm holding the hammer, I don't hammer the nail like this with my arm straight. What happens is the head of the hammer comes up and then I hammer the nail. I'm creating that leverage, that force to then hit the nail. The same feeling we wanna have when we're hitting the forehand. I'm creating that force or that leverage in the rack ahead because it's now lagging behind. So this acts as my lever. And as I make contact, I now have some force to overcome the force of the oncoming ball. And the last reason why racket lag is so effective is because of the whip effect that you can create. The racket head can travel at a much faster speed than if you were to have it locked back. Now in terms of a whip, when the, when the whip is being hit, the, the, the middle of the whip will, will flex and then the end will go fast. Therefore the end of the whip travels a lot quicker than where you're holding it. So you get a nice quick finish as if you're squatting a fly. Now, if you were to make the lever really long and go from your shoulder, have the, the whip being a stick, so it's straight. And if your arm is locked back, if you're tied through your arm, it becomes this. This becomes really slow, so you're never gonna achieve the same speed of racket that you need for topspin, for creating power, and for winning more matches. Now, if you're someone who has the rack ahead and the grip on the same level, it's very hard to create that effortless lag and that whip effect so if you're in this position here with the racket head and the grip level, now all of the weight of the racket is being supported by my wrist and this creates tension. Whereas if I lift the racket head higher than the grip level now, so I'm in this position, the weight of the racket is much lighter in my hand and actually at the start of my swing, I can hold the entire weight of my racket in the left hand, so your non-hitting hand. This is your left hand if you're a right-handed player. From this position, you'll see most pros starting their swing. So they have the rack ahead higher than the grip level, and this also brings the wrist back slightly, so the wrist is already cocked back right from the beginning of the swing. Now what happens is, as they start the, the racket drop, the wrist is still in that position, and then to achieve this effortless lag, it's much easier than if I'm in this position and then having to force it. So for the vast majority of players, it's much easier to create that racket lag if you start with the racket head higher than the grip and you have the racket head higher than the grip all the way through the swing until you start that lag phase. Now guys, if you think about the racket head being above my hand over here, if I'm in this position and I drop the racket and I let it go, I get instant acceleration. Instant acceleration means instant power on the ball. It means more topspin. Now, if I have it in here, I don't have as much acceleration potential as I do from here. I have more space for the racket to accelerate and simply by relaxing my body and letting it happen, letting the racket drop, I'm gonna get that power and the, the wrist lag is gonna help. Step two to having the perfect racket lag is getting your kinetic chain right. Now, what do I mean by that? Kinetic chain is the transfer of energy through your body into contact. 
Now it all starts from the ground up. What you want to do is you want to release and you want to drive from the ground. You want to lift the heel, the knee drives, then the hip, then the shoulder, then the arm, and then the wrist, and then the racket. So actually, the whip starts not only in the arm, but it starts within your body. Now it all starts by coiling the upper body and storing your energy in the trunk. Now this means that I need to separate my shoulder from my hip as much as possible. This separation, this coiling of the body, allows me then to release it into contact and with the racket lag happening, is gonna give me a lot more power than if I was to simply do it with my arm. So things to remember, store your energy by getting a nice turn, get your shoulder pointing to the ball, and then drive up from the ground up. Release that heel from the ground up, so then you can get the full rotation of the body and that racket lag going behind the wrist will allow you to get more snap on the ball, more power on the ball, and more topspin on that ball. Now, if you really want to turn your forehand into a weapon, make sure you download our free forehand PDF guide. All you have to do is click the link under this video. That will take you to our website, and all you have to do there is enter your email address and we'll send you that free PDF right away. And step three to achieving this effortless forehand lag is to be relaxed and to be loose with your wrist. Now, if your wrist is very stiff, if you're very tense, it's very hard to achieve this position. So it's very hard for me to swing at high speeds and get my racket here if I'm holding the racket very tight. So it all starts with your grip tension and how tightly you're holding that racket. Now if I'm gripping it very tight, I'm going to end up feeling that my muscles are stiff and tense. But as soon as I take the fingers off the grip, this allows my hand to stay relaxed and my muscles to stay loose, which will make getting into this position much easier. So a very simple way for you to feel this is at the start of the swing, instead of holding the racket like this, gripping tight, I'm now relaxing the fingers, so the fingertips are coming off the racket as I start that swing, and only when I start the forward phase, I then grip properly. This will help you to stay relaxed and help you to achieve that effortless lag. Now another way to stay relaxed is make sure that you don't hold your breath as you're making contact. Make sure that you're exhaling as you're hitting. That exhale will allow you to be relaxed through your body. If you're tight, you're holding your breath, your whole body's gonna be tight. So breathing, breathe out through the shot. This will help you get the racket lag and it will also help you with rhythm and getting the timing right for your shots. Another way for you to get that relaxation is to make sure that when you're starting the swing all the way till that uh, coiling phase, you're holding the racket with your non-hitting hand. This will take the weight of the racket in that hand and allow you to be relaxed with your hitting hand. Now, if I don't use that hand and I simply swing with one arm, now all the weight of the racket is being supported by my hitting hand. And this comes back to that step one, which is having the right swing. So in this first drill, we're going to be using a towel to create that wrist position that we want in that racket-like phase. It's all about getting it in that slot and then pulling out of that slot. Now here it's important the person holding the towel is not gripping too tightly. You want it to be able to slip out, but you still want to give it a little bit of resistance so you can feel that wrist locked back or cocked back as he's pulling that towel through uh, from my hand. Now we're going to do the same drill, but now with the racket. So Alex is going to be holding the racket in that lag position and I'm pulling it out of the slot, creating even more lag and then uncoiling with the body. And the coach in this position can actually play around with the racket angle, sometimes a little bit close to the ground and sometimes neutral to the right side of the court. The coach can also change up the height of where you're starting from. So this will replicate that higher forehand, that medium height forehand and the low forehands. last drill is all about creating that leverage and focusing on the butt cup of the racket leading the way. So Alex is going to drop feed me and all I'm doing is having my normal swing but instead of hitting the ball with the strings I'm hitting it with the butt cap of the racket. Now to begin I'll only be doing it using the bottom of the racket and then I'll progress on to doing one with the butt cap and one with the actual strings. Oh. 
Thank you so much for watching the lesson. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure you click on that like button and share this video with anyone who would benefit from watching it because we want to help more players improve their game. And if you haven't done so already, do subscribe to the channel. This does help us grow and it helps us create more videos like this in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you soon. Now to begin, I'll just be doing it with the butt cap of the racket and then I'll... <laughs> <laughs> so to begin, I'll be doing it only with... <laughs> To begin, I'll be doing it simply with... <laughs> 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 Alright, I'll do this on my own.